Uh, hi, I'm Jared Mizachi, uh, Producing Artistic Director of Andy Summer Playhouse. I think it is a place to be free um, of all of my anxieties and pressures in real life, and yet it's also a place to explore uh, how to unpack those in real life and kind of have an alternate universe to um, have as a counterpoint to explore, exploring themes and ideas and relevant topics of today and of the past. And so, um, I, and, and that is what everybody agrees to when they walk into the theater as opposed to having to convince a group of people to do that. So I just love that it is this f very freeing incubator space to construct new works that explore reality. I think projections bring, I will actually steal a quote from a really amazing scenographer from the early 1900s and mid 1900s uh, named Robert Edmund Jones. He was from Milton, New Hampshire, uh, and he's an internationally known scenographer uh, who said that we have to keep an eye on the moving cinema, the moving picture, because if we can embrace the cinema in the theater, we will be able to embrace the conscious and unconscious, the subjective and objective, simultaneously. And so I love that in terms of uh, putting video on stage with live actors allows us to see two worlds at once and contemplate multiple things at the same time. You know, the immortal value system of videos being timeless, you can watch them again and again and you can press play and see the exact same thing, put in conflict with theater, which every time you do it, it's slightly different and it is much more mortal and temporal. And so I think that when done well, because that's, I think the most important thing is, when done effectively at its best, it's joining all of our fears and loves and passions of an immortal idealistic world matched with this rougher, around the edges, inconsistent space that we're trying to make into the other. And those things put together, I think, are um, what life is about. So that's when done well. When not done well, it can become really distracting. It can destroy the essence of what theater is. So it would be different if we're saying, what does it mean to put live performers in front of a movie? Um, because the thing that we need to uh, honor is the essence of filmmaking in that point. But when you're putting video on stage, you have to make sure that you're not compromising or destroying the essence of theater, which is liveness, um, in, you know, inconsistent temporal uh, experience for an audience that they know what they're watching is a one-of-a-time value system. So you just, I think, if that's in mind, then you can really create an amazing space. I do. I also think that technology has changed culture. So if we are all in agreement that theater is a mirror held up to the world, then I think it's absolutely paramount that theater adapts technologically. Well, as they say, without lighting, the theater would just be radio. The best theater makers in our world right now are ones that are trying to bridge the gap between technology and analog without killing either or compromising either. So we are definitely in this field going to be seeing a change completely out of incandescent and more than likely moving into LEDs. Uh, a lot of the major theaters are about 50-50 right now and half their inventory is incandescent and half of it is LED. Um, the new LEDs that they've come out with now, the, uh, the ETC uh, Source 4 Luster 2, is an absolutely kind of premium light and I can, you know, you can take that and it's an infinite mix color mixing built into the engine. So I can dial up any color temperature or any color or any saturation that I want to come out of that fixture. So I can make it 98% uh, look like an incandescent fixture. The advantage of an LED is when you dim it or you take, you know, when you, when you dim it, um, it stays the same color. Incandescent fixtures have an amber shift when they, they dim, when they go down on dimmer. So. My, my light blue front light at 40% is actually a different color than it is at 80%, whereas an LED fixture is, stays constant in color no matter what the intensity is. The other cool thing about 
LEDs, is there an additive mixing, not a subtractive? So whenever I put a gel in front of an incandescent light, I'm taking away wavelengths. So I don't get it. A, it, it, a clear, ungelled light, I get all the light out of it. Um, but as soon as I start putting gel in front of it, I can take away you know, 80 or 90% of the light sometimes, depending on the saturation, where LEDs just add more of the particular color of LED to it. So on the heavy saturates uh, colors, they're way, way more intense. On the left, that is a physical gel and an Quite your true color rendition there, is it? You know, color is you know, color is one of the one of the controllable qualities, and it's a it's a, it's one that most people notice. Audiences will notice first, so it's a pretty big stick. So I, I tend to hold off on on the color until I figure out where the light's coming from. You know, is it a backlight? Is it a front light? Is it a side light? And then am I texturing it? And then what color do I want it to be? It is very hard to teach light because. You need to use light to teach light, but most people don't. Most people talk about it, and they look at art books. And... But unless you're turning on light, I don't think you're really learning about light. Teaching in a theater would be great, except that you never have access to your theater, and it's expensive, and there's climbing up on ladders and catwalks and all of that. So it becomes impractical to teach lighting in a theater. Also, in a standard light lab, you don't get to teach composition because it's not actually a theater. You can, you know, all this stuff is to put a light on a face or something. Whereas uh, when I started thinking about what would be the best light lab, it actually became a theater lab. So that a Jaeger lab has, you know, legs and borders and sykes and scrim, black scrim, white scrim, bounce drops, projection screens. Uh, so it's it's actually a miniature theater so that I can I can then teach it in, con in the context of a theater. I always say we never finish a show, we just run out of time. And however far you've got is however good the show is. <laughs> Teaching a class is the same way. If I can get more ideas in the class by, by being able to just reach up and quickly move something, as opposed to dragging a ladder out, I can then go, great, look at that. Well, let's try it over here. Let's try it over here. Let's change that color. Going back to that, you know, you, you never finish a show, you just run out of time. They actually take the model, the set model, pop it into the lab, and then go with the director and the set designer and the costume designer and sound designer and projection designer sometimes and basically discover the show there with light in time so by the time they get into tech it's not the first time anyone's seen this stuff